Okay, well, here we are, Wealth Professors, tax liens exposed. Let's talk about some purchasing strategies. These are some of the strategies that you will use at the auction, after the auction, and also uh, over-the-counter strategies. Uh, so, uh, you know, the thing is, is that we know that there are a pile of states offering the tax liens. Uh, we went through that information already. Uh, and what we're talking about is buying tax liens at the auctions the tax lien certificates uh, and what we're not talking about is buying the specific uh, deeds the regular tax deed which is the property itself we're talking about buying those financial instruments and remember those financial instruments the tax lien certificates uh, will uh, hatch into one of two things uh, at the end of the redemption period uh, they will either hatch into you getting all of your principal back that's all the money that you invested plus a fabulous rate of return or you'll uh, wind up getting the property they'll hatch into an actual physical property and that's when you're going to be getting properties for you know three percent four percent percent five ten fifteen percent on the dollar right absolutely fantastic so let's uh, let's get right into this and talk about the different ways of buying right you can buy online all right at an auction online uh, over the counter uh, you can have somebody uh, go to the auction uh, in your stead okay uh, that's called um, that's called proxy that's if somebody goes to the auction on your behalf uh, you can you know sometimes people will pay an attorney to do that uh, sometimes people will have uh, uh, a brother or a sister or a relative to do that someone sometimes people hire real estate agents uh, to do that to be uh, someone's proxy at a real estate uh, tax lien auction it's whatever but you don't need a specific license for it you don't need any license to uh, to be a bidder uh, there are institutional uh, buyers that are bidders and they they actually have people that work for them that bid professionally so you'll see them there as well the professional um, uh, bidders that work for um, these uh, institutional uh, buying firms all right so you just have to decide what you want to do all right so uh, just understand that most of the jurisdictions that sell tax liens online list the sales on the county tax or treasurer's page on the county website that information will be there right um, and um, in your uh, in your book in your manual the state by state county by county we've got a lot of the uh, web addresses uh, in that book in addition the telephone numbers and the addresses the physical addresses of the you know uh, of where you would buy uh, tax liens uh, in that particular uh, county all right so we have all that information there for you okay so what states okay so um, just understand that it's not just a state uh, it's when you say well which states do it it's not state by state it's really county by county there's an example um, in uh, 2008 some counties in Florida will begin using online uh, tax lien sales well you know the reason why we have that there is that it used to say in 2008 if you checked with Florida that uh, all of the uh, counties in Florida uh, will begin using online tax lien sales and they changed it okay and you can go online now and it's still they're still talking about, it's 2010 and they're still talking about uh, 2008 Arizona has some counties using uh, online tax sales as well a number of them do so you know um, you just have to you just have to pick up the phone and ask you'll take that resource manual that you have that state by state county by county guide and you'll call and you'll ask what and, and you can ask if they're doing online auctions you can also ask uh, if they're doing uh, the over-the-counter sales online you can ask them what are they doing online you know and, you know that kind of thing um, so how are you gonna do it well the first thing is you want to make sure that you're registered for the sale Right. Sometimes uh, they'll they'll uh, send you to uh, the person at the county will uh, have you print. They'll have to go on the you know on the computer and print a form, right, and then fax it to them, right. Sometimes um, they'll they'll have they'll have you they'll you can ask them to send you the form through the mail, and then you can mail it back to them or fax it to them. So you can use the mail, you can use a fax. You can use a computer, and you'll, you're going to find that the different counties, um, even within the same state, you know, and they can even be next to each other. One can be very advanced, and the other one is sort of like, um, you know, in the Flintstones, in the Stone Age. So it's, you know, it's, um, and there's no uh, rhyme or reason for that. It's just the way it is, right? So, um, so there's no point in, um, 
you know, and driving yourself crazy. Uh, but what you have to do is determine uh, if the auction is live, meaning it's timed. You know, every particular property is going to have five minutes or whatever, or it's going to be open outcry, like a you know that kind of live, you know, online, or it's going to be static, where you know that it just ends in a you know at a particular time. Uh, could be a few days or what have you. You know, just you know, just putting the amount in. And some people actually wait to the uh, uh, to the to be the very last bid. They put that in uh, online, and that happens to be their strategy, right? So, um, how do you place a bid, right? So, in a live auction, you want to be sure that you've got a reliable and fast internet connection. You don't want to be using uh, a wireless. Um, I've seen people try to do that. The wireless. Uh, can be very fast, but sometimes it crashes. So, if you're really interested, you really want to be getting properties, you should really have a, you know, a, a wired line. Uh, if you don't have a computer and you want to do this, one of the ways you can do it is to go to the library, right? If your, you know, library doesn't have a lot of people waiting in line uh, like crazy, you can go to the library and go online and actually do it there. We've got one student uh, who does that um, because. They don't have internet at home. Um, he only has um, uh, a. Uh, he's got his own laptop, but he doesn't have any uh, any wireless with the laptop. How do you like that? Okay. So uh, be sure that when you do it, you're in a place where you can't be distracted, right? Because you don't want to miss a uh, prime uh, property. Uh, that's why you know it's best to be someplace quiet. Uh, you know the library is pretty quiet. Um, and so some investors use a strategy. What they do, like I said, they wait until the last moment to bid on the properties, at which point um, then that strategy is similar to the live auction. So you just wait. So it just sits there. If there's 48 hours uh, for a property, uh, it's going to be, you know, the uh, you know the, the hammer or the knockdown is going to be uh, 48 hours, uh, you know, from the moment that it's put up online. Well, you know, that's okay. Uh, you can be the, you know, you try to be the last person in on that and, you know, place the highest bid, you know, uh, or the lowest bid, depending on whether it's a bid down the interest, right, or, uh, you know, or a bid up on the uh, lien, right? So whatever it is, you want to, you know, just bid an amount that you feel personally comfortable with. And that's one of the things uh, that is very good when you use a proxy. If you have somebody else bidding on your behalf and you tell them not to go lower than a particular amount on a bid down or higher than a particular amount on a premium, uh, you're the boss. They have to listen to you, and they don't have any emotional input in it. So uh, if you're a type of person that gets carried away, you may want to use uh, a, a proxy, right? So, I mean, uh, one of the things uh, that I love, and I mentioned this uh, earlier, the over-the-counter sales, understand that uh, you can buy some of the previous year's uh, uh, taxes, okay, and this year's, it's automatic interest. It's right there. Um, it's a, a fantastic way of getting yourself unprecedented uh, return on investment for you know a very simple way of doing it because there's no bidding when you're buying over the counter there's no competition right you set your own timeline how you want to do it in a very uh, relaxed manner right so uh, the other thing what I love about it is that even in areas where there uh, can be a you know a two-year redemption period that clock um, at many times has already been ticking and you're buying properties um, where the redemption period has been satisfied for maybe a year and there's only a one year left on a two-year redemption period or 18 months have gone by and there's only six months left on a redemption period so this is a way okay of turning a short-term I mean a long-term state or a long-term environment into a short-term environment by uh, by buying over-the-counter right so you know again and I love it because um, you buy it at your own uh, your own uh, pace, your own time, okay, um, your own way, uh, and you know I like that because there's no pressure. But there is a risk when you're doing over the counter, and the risk is getting stuck with a you know with one of those properties like a struck off property uh, that you know that maybe uh, has some environmental issues that kind of thing. You know you've got some kind of crazy gas station or something. New Jersey, like we mentioned, that happens. You don't want to get an abandoned gas station. But if you've done your due diligence, right, and that's the idea, uh, because there are horror stories, and the horror stories that people fall into in these traps is that they don't do the due diligence. They just buy a lien based on you know seeing the the number of the lien. 
uh, at the uh, at the county, and they don't do the due diligence. You want to do that due diligence. I, as I said, I like to stick to uh, regular single family, plain vanilla homes. Um, you know, and um, and I do that because most homes, uh, the the thing you can sell the fastest is a regular single family, plain vanilla home. I mean, that's you know pretty much is you know that's where everybody wants to live. That's what the most of the housing stock is in the United States. Uh, everybody understands it. Uh, and if you're getting going to get a property uh, for five and ten and fifteen cents on the dollar, you can sell that at half price any day of the week. Uh, whereas you know with a gas station or some sort of industrial property, it's a little more difficult, right? So just understand that. I I look at things um, in terms of what's my rate of return. And when I get the property, how quickly can I sell it for half price, right? I mean, and am I going to have a problem? Am I going to have an environmental problem, right? So what you want to do is on the over-the-counter is call your county treasurer's office and ask if they've got any leftovers. Remember, over-the-counter is leftovers. Leftover, over-the-counter. OTC, or over the, which is over-the-counter, or leftover, LOs. So they call them that as well. Right, so you ask them if the answer is yes, okay, that they've got the leftovers. I mean, it's worth it to get right down there, right, and uh, you know, get the certified check, money order, whatever else it is, get it in hand and get rolling on it. If you are going to be in this business, um, and you know, and the whole thing with the auction competition, it drives you a little bit crazy. Over the counter is the way to go. I love it because I tell everybody you've got you know the time to do your due diligence. And and they're there. Uh, yes, it's true that some of the things that are over the counter are dogs, uh, but there's plenty of good stuff over the counter. You just have to do some due diligence, right? So you know you call the you know you can call the uh, clerk. Uh, generally, uh, they'll be helpful to you. But you know they you know they're they're people that work for a municipality or for a county. Uh, and they're civil servants, so their job is to be civil to you. Their job isn't to develop you as an investor. So just understand that, right? So you want to pre-register. Uh, there's almost uh, always a pre-registration period. You have got to call the uh, county treasurer's office uh, for those uh, details. You can uh, ask the um, the person on the telephone for the property list. Um, you can. It's either going to be uh, the treasurer or the tax collector, and you ask them for the list. What you're going to do is go through the list, uh, do your due diligence, determine which properties you intend to buy. Right, uh, and what you want to do is just mark them. You circle them, whatever, so that you know uh, which ones that you know that you want to buy. Right, so that's it. So you've done the work. Now, it's rare, but there are some counties and some states that charge fees to participate in the auction. That happens. So some of them have a fee, uh, you know, and then they do away with the fee. You know, it's just that kind of thing. Uh, you just have to ask if there are any fees. If the county you're going to be attending at an auction has fees. Right, they usually do when you register for it, and that's usually going to be, um, you know, a day, two, three days in advance. Right, if there's if there are fees, you want to fill out your tax forms, have that all done. Right, the W nine, um, and some people what they do is they use the strategy of having a form for themselves. This way, they personally become a bidder, and a form for their uh, corporation or LLC, and that particular entity uh, becomes a bidder. That one person uh, really then uh, that's sitting there, you yourself, you would have uh, two bidder numbers. Uh, some people do that, right? Um, you know, uh, and the counties want their money, so whether it's uh, certified funds, a cashier's check, a money order, uh, typically uh, they don't want um, uh, personal checks. Um, you know, some of them take credit cards. Very often they don't. I mean, it's just a, a mixture of things, you know, so... Um, you just contact the county beforehand so that you know what the specific rules are. You want to take advantage of any, um, you know, any easy way that that particular county has of paying. You know, maybe you know, maybe they do take credit or debit cards. Maybe they don't take credit, but they'll take a debit. You just don't know, right? So you'd have to you have to ask, right? And it changes, so that's something to ask all the time. That practical piece of asking how do how do they take the money? Uh, what kind of form you can ask them this question? What form do my funds need to be in? What form do my funds need to be in? Now the thing is. Um, you know, on the redemption period, you can talk to the county tax collector or the clerk, right, in some of the smaller counties and ask them, you know, if uh, they have a clue as to, you know, which properties might be redeeming. You know, it's funny because I called, um, I did some some uh, work with uh, 
uh, our state-by-state -state guide, state-by-state, -state, county by county, and I called the county in Montana uh, because Montana is known as not having a lot of information, uh, you know, uh, on a uh, on a public basis. And I called the Box Butte, Montana, and I asked them some information uh, as far as you know what's going to be up for sale. They told me where to find uh, the uh, publisher that would have that information, and then I called the county back and I went through some of the um, some of the items that were on that list after the publisher sent me the the list, and I said. I asked them, you know, which uh, which items you think are more likely to redeem. I'm not from the area. I'm from New York City. You know, uh, you just say it. You know, be com you know be completely transparent. They want the money from you, so you know it's not like oh boy, he's from New York City. We're in Box Butte, Montana, so we won't talk to them. So just have a dialogue. You know, it's the old-fashioned way. It's okay. So what I love about the tax liens is that you can do it the old way. You can do it in the new way. You can do a combination of the old and new way. So you get on the phone and you ask them those questions so you know which properties do you think might you know might be redeeming and then you know and or you can speak pick some uh, specific properties and ask them, do you think this one's going to redeem faster? Do you think that one's going to redeem? Do you think this one? And they may say, you know what? This particular property or this spread, and like in Montana, they had all this acreage, right? Well, you know, they said, well, you know, this one, uh, this is owned by such and such a person, and uh, you know, well, you know, they'll be, uh, you know, they'll be redeeming because they don't want to lose that property. Uh, but this other one that you just mentioned, which is uh, right next door to it, that, that spread of land, I doubt very highly if they're going to redeem, uh, you know, and uh, and that's it. And you, it's not that they're giving you advice. They're just telling you what they think, right? That's okay. And it gives you a little bit of the lay of the local land, right? So after all that, right, it's auction time. When you show up at the auction, you want to show up with that certified or the bank check or the money orders. Like I said, they don't really want your checkbook. They don't really want uh, want you to stroke a check right there. Uh, for a particular amount because it's a personal check, right? So look around, you'll see, uh, you know, you'll see uh, some people that seem to know each other, they're talking to each other, they're uh, patting each other on the back or they're shaking hands or they're drinking coffee and having bagels together. Uh, sometimes those people uh, are regulars and you can talk to them a little bit. Uh, what you don't want to do is uh, reveal to them the uh, properties that uh, you're looking to uh, bid on. You don't want to share that with anybody. There's no reason to that. Uh, you, you don't want them to knock you out on the properties that you want. Or, uh, you know, uh, you may find that they don't want those properties at all. And what you do is you just create competition for yourself by, you know, by talking to them about those. But, you know, talk to the regulars, um, you know, see if they give you little tips. You can tell them. You can say it's the first time that you're showing up. Um, you know, do you have any information about this kind, you know, this sale? Uh, you know, that that's all. I mean, you don't have to ask a million questions. You can just kind of get, you know, introduce yourself, get to know people, right? But as I said, don't reveal what you're planning to bid on. Uh, that's your business because you don't want to be losing your lien. You don't want to do that. During the sale, understand that it can be any number of different ways, whether it's round robin, right? Um, uh, random, uh, silent auction, uh, or if it's you know old-fashioned open outcry, right? Where the auctioneer is saying, "Okay, it might be a hundred dollars. I got a hundred dollars. Anybody got a one? I got a one now. One and a quarter. One and a half. And seventy-five. And two. And two. Get it and 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 two. Whatever it is, okay. That's the way it is. But stick to your plan on however you're going to bid. That's fine. If it's a bid-down auction, don't go below what you see is the lowest acceptable interest rate, right? So whatever you decide, whatever that low bid is, right on a bid down, right? You talk about a bid down the interest. So uh, just don't don't go any lower. If it's let's say it's Florida, it's eighteen percent. The lowest you you say that you're going to go is twelve. Well, when it hits twelve, you have your hand up. If it goes down to uh, eleven and three quarters, you put your hand down. You're right. You 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 don't need to be compelled to do that. So you just go on to the next one. There are plenty of properties, plenty of fish in the sea. So you don't have to feel pressured that you have to have that property. All right. So just understand that. And you know, there's a lot of liens. Um, so most of the auctions are going to move pretty fast, right? So be ready to bid at a pretty quick pace. It's okay. Uh, don't get nervous if you know if you don't get what you want on the first one, or you just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. What's going to keep you safe is knowing what the bottom is. So if you're bidding down the interest, and you you know as I said, it, and it's the the interest rate starts at 18%, uh, and you know your your cutoff point is 12%. Well, that's it. At 12%, you don't bid anymore. That's okay. And you know one of them will come up. You know at the sale that you can have. 
And that's the advantage, again, of the over-the-counter, because there's no bidding on that, right? So shout out your bids when you're, when you're there at the auction sale, right? And shout them out with authority, right? And what you want to do is you're going to have to kind of match the volume of the other bidders. You know, it's not really much of this, you know, uh, that you see on TV where people are scratching their noses or they're, they're winking at the auctioneer, that kind of thing. It's, uh, it's in a public place. Uh, it's not like a Sotheby's or a Christie's auction where everybody's wearing tuxedos. Uh, people are going to come in with uh, dirt under their fingernails, uh, uh, unshaven faces, and uh, pockets full of cash, right? Because cash talks and everything else walks at the uh, at the auction sale, so they want the money. So just understand that, right? So you have to be heard if you're going to bid at one of the auctions. So, you know, stay in the room during the breaks, stay in the room during the off times, right? What you don't want to do, um, you know, is leave while anything's going on. You want to stay because uh, you want to work through, you know, all of the properties. Sometimes people decide they're going to take phone calls during the day. They do this, and then something accelerates or they strike off. They get rid of some properties that were on the sale, and all of a sudden they're up to uh, a page that you were interested in. And and uh, because they got rid of a pile of properties and they're, you know, know up to your page uh, sooner than they thought and you happen to be out and you're you know you're talking to uh, your friend your uncle uh, you know an old roommate from school or something else then you miss out uh, on your uh, on your properties and when a pile of people when they they take some of the properties off the sale what happens is a lot of people leave and you'll wind up with fewer people at the sale and you'll even have um, uh, less competition so for you as a bidder the less competition the better Right. The more competition, the better it is for the seller, which is the uh, municipality or the county. And uh, the less competition, the better it is for you, uh, the buyer or the bidder. Right. Um, if we talk about this, okay, we talked a little bit about uh, 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 Texas. Texas has homestead and non-homestead properties. And the same thing with uh, with Florida. Florida has Tex uh, has uh, homestead and non-homestead properties. Uh, as an individual uh, person buying at the auction, this is what I do. I go after the uh, non-homestead properties. The institutional investors don't usually uh, buy those because, in general, the institutional investors uh, are mostly um, mostly bankers and insurance companies, and what they they're really after is the big fat rate of return. They really want that big fat interest. They're not as interested in getting the properties. I know it sounds crazy to you, right? But that's what they're after. So these non-homestead properties are too um, um, problematic for them. Even though they're not problematic properties, they just want the regular thing, you know, like a, a big fat lien, you know, of you know, of fifty thousand dollars, you know, against a five million dollar property. They want to buy that, you know, and get their twenty five percent on that in six months. I mean, and that's a very happy institutional investor, as you'd be happy as I'm happy with those kinds of investments, right? But what you want to do is if you're targeting properties, you want to go after those non-homestead properties uh, because uh, it's it's not somebody's primary, uh, primary residence. It can be a second home. Uh, it can be one of those, uh, like I talked about, a... Um, a, a property that's uh, that's a commercial property that's uh, prime for single tenant triple net lease. Uh, that's the kind of properties that you love to have in your portfolio, right? So that's a that's a that's a tip right there, and that tip is worth its weight in gold. That's a wonderful strategy for you to use. Uh, you you may want to avoid some of the really low end, cheap, 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 cheap liens. You know, the fifty dollar liens, the hundred dollar liens, the two hundred dollar liens. Uh, because very often they're connected to uh, junky properties. But if you've done your homework, uh, and you just have to understand, if you've done your homework and these liens, these small liens, are on a good piece of property, there's nothing wrong with them, right? It's not that I don't like a $100 lien because I don't like $100, right, or a $200 lien because I don't like it because I've got something against $200 liens. It's it's because very often, okay, those types of liens uh, are uh, held against a very small lot, a vacant uh, rubbled, you know, city lot, uh, unbuildable, that kind of thing, something that's too narrow or too long. Uh, but if you've done your due diligence, right, that'll um, that'll overcome this issue, right? So because you may want to be the person that buys $200, you know, $200 liens on uh, city lots. Uh, I know uh, uh, people that have done that, and what they do is they just sell that lot. If it's 200 bucks, and let's say that land uh, that that $200 lien is on, 
uh, shows that it's you know that it's worth five grand. It's five thousand bucks. Uh, you know the person doesn't redeem, and you go and sell that lot to the uh, person that lives next door. You know in the you know in the house next door, and you can sell that to them for three thousand dollars or two thousand uh, dollars. You know that's that's quite a return on on two hundred bucks. So you know don't be afraid of those things as long as you've done your due diligence. There's a business in every one of these areas. But you just got to pick the thing that's right for you, right? And how much, you know, you want to walk around and how much you want to, you know, get out there and get among them, right? So, uh, you know, at the end of the thing, you want to pay the treasurer, right? Uh, claim the lien, right? Be sure to have your purchase notarized. You want to record the lien that belongs to you, right? You want to do that. Prepare to collect the interest. If you want to collect quickly, you may choose to notify the homeowners that you have bought their lien and... Um, that usually gets it paid faster. If you're looking to get paid faster, if you feel like doing this, you call it. Uh, you call the person that's the homeowner slash taxpayer, and you say, uh, "I just bought the three thousand dollar lien that's on your three hundred thousand dollar property. I just want to let you know." Uh, and sometimes uh, that'll get the uh, the person moving pretty quick uh, to uh, uh, to pay it off uh, and to uh, to get the redemption. And understand, like if you're in uh, Texas. It's a six-month redemption period uh, on a redeemable deed, uh, and you, you're going to get that 25% uh, no matter what, uh, meaning that if that person redeems uh, in the six months, you get 25%. If they redeem in six hours, you still get the 25%. I mean, this is huge, right? So if they take six days to to to, uh, to do it or one week to redeem that, you get an entire 25%. So, you know, that's uh, something that you may want to do as well. You're not looking to harass anybody. But, you know, it's just, you know, just that kind of thing. Now, after the auction sale, like I said, you want to pay the treasurer, claim your lien, right? Be, sh be sure to have it notarized, and you want to record that lien. You, even, you may even want to keep it in a safe place, like a safe deposit box or something like that, right? Um, and you got to get ready to collect your interest if you want to collect quickly. Like I said, notify those uh, those uh, homeowners, and nothing gets it, you know, nothing gets it paid uh, faster than that. Now, Generally, the auctions are the best way to buy tax liens um, uh, because generally the best ones uh, are up for the auction in general, right? But um, you can um, mitigate any problems with properties by doing um, due diligence, right? Over the counter is a fabulous opportunity. Right. What you don't want to do uh, is, you know, is buy something that's a biohazard site or that's, uh, you know, that there's some kind of environmental uh, issue on there. Uh, it's not a joke. You can really get hurt uh, buying, you know, one of those type of properties. But over the counter is wonderful as long as what you've done is, and you've got to make sure that you do your due diligence first. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're the person that understands that the tax lien is safe because it's backed by a piece of real estate. That's great, but now what you have to do is say, okay, well, how good is that piece of real estate? That's all. So you just check that. So you know, um, and understand that uh, over the next few years, okay, online auctions is going to be more and more auctions, more and more things online. That's just the way everything keeps moving, right? But um, but there's still you know it's still people based. There are people there, so you're going to go through uh, your uh, state by state, county by county uh, guides. You're going to get on there. You're going to talk to those people that are at the counties. You're going to um, you know ask them those questions. You know uh, how many leftovers do you have? How would I go about this? Is what you ask the tax collector? How would I go about? Uh, buying the leftovers uh, that are there, you know the the bid downs, right? The you know the bid ins, right? The bid offs. How am I going to do that, right? And they'll they'll talk to you, and like I said, uh, they'll work with you. Very often they'll be very very civil and even helpful, uh, but don't expect that they're going to uh, you know be there to develop you and your business. But they uh, should answer your uh, your questions, and um, you know buying whether it's over the counter. Uh, is wonderful uh, going to the auctions physically also uh, you know a fantastic thing 
Uh, and it's just a question of what your personality is. Some people just don't want to leave the home. If you don't want to leave the home, then, you know, start, you know, working on, you know, doing things over the counter. Uh, some people don't want to do the uh, auctions. We'll start working on doing things over the counter. Uh, some people like the auctions, uh, but they don't want to leave home. So you have to call uh, the counties and you have to ask if they have their auctions online. That's all. Uh, everybody's got their own thing. Some people, they say, well, if I don't buy it at auction, I don't think I'm getting a good deal. Well, that's not true. Uh, some people say, well, you know, I, I'm only going to buy uh, over the counter. Well, that's okay. Any way you want to do it is fine. But the most important thing is that you do that due diligence on the property, right, and that you get started. And you have to know, you, this is the thing with uh, tax lien investing, you have to know how much money am I going to begin with? Am I going to begin with a couple of hundred bucks doing this? Am I going to begin with a couple of thousand? Am I going to plunk 200,000? Uh, am I going to plunk a million dollars into it? Here's the, what's great about it <clears throat> is because it's so safe, it's okay. It's all right to to uh, set aside a big pile of money and do it. And it's okay if you don't have a big pile of money. You can do this on a small basis with the $50 liens and $100 liens and $200 liens. You can do it with $1,000 liens and $2,000 liens and four and $5,000 liens. You can do it with $20,000 liens, $50,000 liens. You can do it with a whole series of liens, uh, you know, and, and, you know, and, and on a regular basis uh, be buying, you know, $50,000, $100,000 worth of liens. It's okay. Okay, but the thing that you have to do is you've got to do that due diligence, right? So um, that is going to uh, close it for um, for this particular module. This was the uh, fifth module. Uh, it is. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you through the modules. But just understand this: whether you're doing over the counter, or uh, you're doing online auctions, or you're going to the auctions. And, uh, and you're there in person and you're doing it personally or if you're using a proxy. All of those ways work. It's just a question of figuring out who you are as an investor, right? And then working who you are as an investor into the tax liens because the tax liens are the safest, most sane, most secure way of becoming wealthy in the United States today. Either you're going to wind up getting those properties, getting getting the all of your principal back, plus that phenomenal interest each and every time, right? Because that uh, that lien is on the property, and that's what's guaranteed, okay? It's uh, the, the uh, investment is backed by that real estate, and it's guaranteed by the county uh, and by the state. And if you don't get all of your money back plus interest, remember what you're going to get. You're going to get that piece of valuable real estate for 5, 10, 15, 20 cents on the dollar. Having said that, okay, this is George Fuchs, Wealth Professors. Uh, take good care and be wealthy. Talk to you on the next module.